الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد today we study a very beneficial and beautiful verse from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifying some great signs some great signs of the power and the authority and the supreme knowledge and wisdom and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise clarifying a beneficial point with regards to the understanding of al-ikhlas and sincerity and purity of intention and the foundation of the deen is to be sincere and to make the religion entirely for Allah alone and Allah he mentioned in his book وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ and they were not ordered with anything except to worship Allah how? مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ making the deen making the religion making all of the acts of obedience and submission completely and entirely and purely for Allah alone for Allah alone Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, Ala lillahi ad-deen al-khalis. Ad-deen al-khalis. That indeed, for Allah alone is the pure religion. All actions of obedience and submission and devotion and humbleness and love and compliance and trust and reliance and fear is for Allah alone. And it must be khalis, ad-deen الخالص والإسلام هو الدين الخالص وما جاء به النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هو الدين الخالص The religion of Al-Islam is the pure religion and that which Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he came, with, he came with the pure religion the religion of purity purity in creed purity in belief purity in worship Purity in manners and conduct and dealings. Purity in every aspect of life. The most pure and the best. The most clean and upright. The most noble and righteous and pious good way of life. Allahu Akbar. Allah lillahi. Ad-deenul khalis. Ad-deenul khalis. So in the Arabic language, this word here, al-khalis, it means pure. It means pure. Al-Khalis, it means pure. It means pure. Something that is khalis is something that is pure. What does pure mean in, in, in English? What does pure mean in English? If something is pure, what does that mean? It means... Huh? Clean, clean. Okay, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good synonym. Clean. Safi. Naqi. Yeah, that's right. Khadis. Naqi. Naqi. Yani. It means clean. Pure. Also, Khadis. Yani. Safi. Safi. A Safi. The one that is completely purified. Meaning that there's nothing mixed up with it at all. That's what Khadis means. That's what a Safi means. That's what a Naqi means. Al Khadis. Al Khadis. That's what. Al Khadis means. It means a Safi wa al Naqi, meaning it's something that's pure and it's not mixed up with anything else whatsoever. It's not mixed up with anything else whatsoever. Something that is pure, it's, it does not have anything mixed with it whatsoever, like pure gold. Something that's pure gold, it's all 100% gold and there's no other elements or ores or anything else. Mixed up with it whatsoever. Whatsoever. We understand the meaning of pure now? From this word here, al khalis and the, the derivatives of this word, we have the word likewise, Al-Ikhlas. 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 So the word Al-Ikhlas, it means to purify something and to make it clean and pure and, and to remove all impurities. 
And ikhlas, it means to make something very pure, to make it khalis, to make it khalis. So the pure and the good religion is the religion that Allah accepts and He only accepts that which is sincerely and purely and only for Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the actions of worship and likewise according to the way of His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now we understand the word khalis. And from there we see likewise at ikhlas. So al-ikhlas in ibadah, this means to make the worship purely and sincerely and wholeheartedly for Allah alone. For Allah alone. For Allah alone. That, that means that the heart is directed to Allah and devoted to Allah and is hoping in Allah and not thinking about anything else or desiring or wanting anything else from the worldly life for that for the performance of that action or that statement or that deed we understand this this is this is al-ikhlas and this is the greatest blessing and the greatest favor and the one who is performing al-ikhlas he is called al-mukhlis al-mukhlis the one who is he has sincerity and the one who has the pure and the good intention he's called al-mukhlis and this is what we have been ordered to be. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ Making the deen, meaning making all actions of obedience and submission and love and worship purely and sincerely and only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the beautiful understanding and this is from the beauty of Al-Islam that all actions of worship, therefore Allah alone. And we have seen why. And we have seen the wisdom behind that in our previous classes and studying the pillars of faith and studying likewise the tafsir, ayat wa kursi. And we have seen all of those proofs indicating that Allah alone is the one who's worthy of worship. And al-ikhlas, this is the definition or this is the description of the statement of at tawheed They call the shahada, karimatul ikhlas wa karimatul tawheed. Karimatul ikhlas wa karimatul tawheed, meaning to believe that there's nothing worthy of worship whatsoever to negate all worship from everything besides Allah and to affirm it sincerely and purely and only for Allah alone. So then the, the statement of the shahad is a statement of ikhlas. And the statement of tawheed is the statement of ikhlas. And the person that has ikhlas, he's the one whom Allah accepts his actions and deeds. And the actions that are performed without ikhlas, they will be rejected and not accepted. It has been... Narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said that Allah said. What is that kind of hadith called? Al-Hadith al-Qudsi. Ahsanti. Allahumma barik. That Allah, he says, Ana aghna shuraka'i ana shirk. Wa man amila amala ashraka fihi ma'i ghayri taraktuhu wa shirka. I am the one who has absolutely no need. I am in no need whatsoever of any partner or any associate whatsoever. And whoever does an action or whoever does a deed and associates another partner with me in that action, taraktuhu wa shirka. I will leave him and his partner. I will leave him and his partner. Allah Azza wa Jal, He created the heavens and the earth by Himself with no partners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given everything its shape and its form by Himself with no partners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is providing for this entire creation. He's providing and sustaining and maintaining this entire creation, and it's easy for Him, and He does not get tired. He's doing that by Himself alone with no partners. 
So therefore, Al Ali Al Azim, Al Hayy Al Qayyum, La ilaha illa Hu. Therefore, there is no partners with him likewise in worship. He has no need for any partners in creating and providing and sustaining. And likewise, he has no partners. No one shares with him in his beautiful names and attributes of perfection. And likewise, therefore, he has no partners in worship. So the religion that Allah accepts is Ad-Din Al-Khalis. Ad-Din Al-Khalis. And we have been ordered to make the religion purity for him. And nakuna mukhrisina lahu din and nakuna mukhlisina lahu din so with this understanding now we read this verse and this verse here it has the word khalis in it and what is intended here is the linguistic meaning of purity of purity but if we ponder over this verse we will see the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah and also many other benefits that would increase our faith bi idnillahi ta'ala and likewise we will understand the meaning of having a pure intention and making the worship sincerely for Allah alone. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He says in this beautiful verse, وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَعِبَرَةِ And verily in the cattle, there is a lesson for you. In the cattle. You know what the cattle are? What are the cattle? Al-an'am. Al-an'am. Al-an'am are the cattle. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنْعَامِ لَعِبَرَةِ the cat, well, How do you say cattle? الْأَنْعَام What are cattle, by the way? Chickens, roosters, ducks, fish. Huh. What are cattle? Uh, ca the cattle, they are cows and sheep and goats and and camels, and camels. These are the an'am. These are the an'am. The camels, they're called cattle. And likewise, the sheep and goats, they're called cattle. And also the cows and the buffaloes, they're called cattle. They're called an'am. Behemoth would an'am. These are the an'am. These are the cattle. These are the cattle. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He's telling us that indeed in the cattle, there is an ibrah. What is an ibrah? Ibratun. Ibratun. Ibratun means a great sign and proof and lesson to learn from. The Ibra is something that if you reflect upon it and ponder and think deeply about it, you will benefit in a great manner and take a great lesson and learn so many great benefit and wisdoms. So this is the case here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us that in the An'am there is a great Ibra, a great lesson, a great lesson, a great lesson in the cows. Where do they come from? Allah, He created the cows. How do they reproduce? The cows, they're born in the womb of their mother. And then the cows, they come out of the womb. A big baby cow. But he's not even, he's a baby cow. But you know, baby cows are not like little baby people. Baby cows are kind of big. They come out and then pretty soon they're walking. Like, how do they learn how to walk? Huh? Does the mom like pick up the hands of the cow and like walk with, walk him with him like the people do? You have to walk the baby a little bit and hold his hands or, or what happens? He just pretty soon he just stands up and starts walking around following his mom. The camel's the same way and the goat's the same way. How is that? How is that? How did they learn that? Allah Azza wa Jal from the beautiful names of Allah Al Hadi Al Hadi Allah He is the one who guides Allah He is the one who guides the creation He guides all of the creation to know and to realize and to be able to strive to do that which is good and beneficial for its life and likewise Allah He guides even more specifically those whom He loves from His creation to Al Islam and to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the camels and the cattle and the sheep and the goats and the likes, it is Allah, He guides them. He guides them and inspires them, gives them guidance until they know how to walk and they know how to look for their food. How does the cow know that the milk is in the udder of its mother? Somebody go over there and tell him, hey, if you just look over there, you see that thing right there? If you put your mouth right there, you get some milk. Or does the mother be like, hey, Dal, come on, I got your milk. Or he just already knows. How did he know that? Allah Azza wa Jal. What is this chapter called, by the way? 
This is in the chapter of An-Nahl. What is An-Nahl? An-Nahl, yani the bees. And the, one of them is the Nahla. One of them is the Nahla, the, the, the bee. Have you seen the bee? The bees, they go like so far away searching for the right, for the, for the best flowers to gather the pollen so that they can make their honey. Maybe sometimes they travel miles. You know how little a bee is? You know how long a mile is for you to walk? How about this little bitty bee? A mile is even bigger for him because he's so small. They go so far searching for this flower. No, not that flower. This flower. No, no. Oh, here's the right flower. Found him. And then they get the pollen. And then he's going to move to another flower. And they all know which one is the best one. And they know how to look for it. And he never gets lost. He never gets lost. He doesn't go back to the wrong hive. Oops. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, hey, no, this is the wrong beehive. Go to the other one. You're in the wrong place, buddy. You better buzz out. <laughs> no, it doesn't happen. The bees, they know where to go. The bees, they have guidance. Al-Hadi Yahdihim. Yahdihim Rabbuhum. Their Lord guides the bees. The Lord, their Lord guides them. These are signs that this is the creation of Allah. This creation belongs to Allah. In reality, everything we discuss now is an interpretation of Ayatul Kursi. An interpretation of the beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal and His attributes of perfection and that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Him. He created the cattle. He created the cattle. Can you create some cattle? No, you cannot create no cattle. Can you provide? Who provides for the cattle? Allah Azza wa Jal, He provides for the cattle in such, in such beautiful manner. And the cattle, they, 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 they eat the grass and then next thing you know, it turns into milk. Where do you get milk from? From the refrigerator, right? Where do you get milk from? Do you know that milk comes from the cattle? Do you know that cows have milk in their bellies? Do you know that goats and sheep have milk in their bellies? Do you know that camels have milk in their bellies? Have you ever drank camel, camel milk? One time whenever I was in Medina, my friends from the Students of Knowledge from Libya, they took me into the desert and there was a camel farm and there are these people and they had camels all over the place and they're and some of them were here and there and they're very, very big, way bigger than even me. And then they had this place on the ground in the desert where you sit and they had uh, rugs and everything and then the camel keeper he goes right across the thing in front of you maybe like 15 20 feet away and he has a big old bowl and he stands right beside the camel and then he starts milking it and he fills up a big old bowl of milk right there in front of you you see it coming up we're looking at him and he's standing behind on the side of the camel and the camel is keeps kicking him in the back raising his foot up behind him and kicking him and then he's just standing there milking it and he's taking kicks on the side and then he comes over to us and he sets a big giant bowl of milk down right in front of us and then we all drink it and it's so tasty and so good fresh it is so pure it was completely white like so pure and so clean and so sweet and so tasty straight from the camel it was really amazing it was really amazing. So the, the animals, the cattle, they have many benefits. And from them is the milk that's so tasty and delicious and so healthy and nutritious and so beneficial for the people, for the people. So these are all from the signs. But here's an even more specific sign. Allah, He says, نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهِ مِن بَيْنِ فَرْثٍ وَدَمٍ Lebanon Khalisan Sa'igan Sharibin that we give you to drink of that which is in their bellies. What is in their bellies? The bellies of the cattle? Milk. Milk is in the bellies of the cattle. Where does the milk come from? Inside the bellies. What else is in the belly, you think? Like inside the belly, just a belly full of milk, that's it? Huh? <laughs> Or maybe there's some, like for example, maybe the camel, or maybe the cow, maybe he's eating some grass, or maybe some eating some leaves. Probably in his belly is some grass and leaves too. And then where does the milk come from? What? How did the milk get in there? How did the milk get in there? Allahu Akbar. This, he's walking around eating grass, and next thing you know, there's milk? Wait a second. Are you serious? 
Wallahi, that's amazing. Okay, think about it. What do cows and camels, what do they eat? Do, they eat, do, do cows eat cows? Do cows eat chickens? Do cows eat animals? What do cows eat? They eat grass. They eat grass. Okay, the camels, the same thing. They, they, they eat the grass. And the, and the sheep, what do they do? They're, they're called cattle because they graze the pasture. They graze the pastures. They go out into the land and the field and they just eat on the grass that's on the ground. They eat on the grass that's on the ground. Then where does the milk come from? It turns into milk. Allah Azza wa Jal, He causes the milk to form in their bellies from the nutrition that they eat. This is such an amazing affair. This is such an amazing affair. Like all of a sudden they're eating grass and next thing you know there's milk in the belly. SubhanAllah. And then, not only that, the milk is so tasty. But also in the belly, there's other stuff too. Because some of this, the grass like turns into some nutrition and some benefit. And then some of the other stuff, yani, that's not beneficial, it has to go out of the belly. So that turns into, that turns into excretions. Excretions. What's that called? Poo-poo. That's called poo-poo. But Allah, He mentions this in His book to clarify. We laugh about this, but this is in reality some of the most amazing affairs. That is an indication that Allah Azza wa Jal, He is the greatest and the most high. And that He is our Lord and our Master. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we are returning back, back to Him. Back to Him. We give you to drink of that which is in their bellies. مِنْ بَيْنِ فَرْثٍ وَدَمٍ لَبَنٍ خَالِصًا From between excretions and blood. Pure milk. Palatable to the drinkers. Palatable and it's sweet and tasty. Sweet and tasty. Where does the milk come from? From between poo-poo and blood. The milk is coming. We give you to drink that which is from that which is in their belly. That's coming between excretions and blood. Any excretions meaning between the poo poo and the blood. So inside the belly, it's all mixed up. It's all inside the animal. Inside the animal, there's blood in there because the animals have blood. And there's also poo poo in there because the animals are getting rid of the, the, the stuff that they don't need. Also from the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also in there, there's milk. So it's mixed. But whenever the milk comes out, how does it come out? Lebanon Khalisan. That's the shahid. That's the point. It comes out pure, pure milk. Lebanon Khalisan. Sa'igan the shadibin. It comes out pure milk. So tasty and sweet and delicious for those who drink. So it's mixed up with all these things in the belly, but whenever it comes out of the belly, ready to benefit mankind, it comes out pure. Lebanon Khalisan. Yani Lebanon Safian, Lebanon Naqiyan, pure milk. It's milk that's not mixed with anything. It's 100% clean. There's not one drop of blood mixed with it whatsoever. And there's not one speck of poo poo mixed with it whatsoever. This is the point. How does it come out? How does it come out? Lebanon Khalisan. It's mixed up in the middle. It's mixed up. Baina Farthin Wadamin, Baina Farth, excretions. Wadamin, blood, Lebanon, Khalisan. It comes out pure. It's mixed up in the, between these things, but when it comes out, it comes out pure. When you get the milk straight from the udder, there's not one drop of blood. And there's not one piece of poo poo. Not one little piece. It's all pure milk. You understand that? This is an amazing affair from the great signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that pure milk that's not mixed with anything whatsoever. This is how the ibadah must be. Likewise, that's the deen that's khalis. That's the example of the deen that's khalis. If you want the deen to be khalis, it must not be mixed with anything whatsoever. It cannot be mixed with hoping for somebody to, 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 to praise you or to thank you. Not even just a little bit. Not even a speck. Not even a speck of hoping to, to pray so somebody will say, Oh, mashallah, you pray good. Or not even, not even just a little bitty tiny drop of reciting the Quran with a beautiful voice so that people say, oh, mashallah, you have a beautiful voice. Oh, you can recite the Quran. How old are you? Oh, you're only that old and you memorize so much. Oh, 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 Like this. You don't have not even a drop of that. Not even a speck of that. That cannot be in the heart at all. If not, it's not considered khalis. If it's mixed up, if the milk comes out with a drop of blood, is it called khalis? 
If it comes out with one little bit speck of poo poo, is it called khadis? La. The milk, does it come out like that? How does it come out? Khadis. It comes out pure. It comes out pure. Likewise, the worship that Allah accepts, the worship that is beneficial, the testimony, la ilaha illallah, that is upright, it is the one that is pure. It is pure. It has to be pure for Allah alone, sincere, wholeheartedly. For Allah alone. And the secret behind this, may Allah bless you and increase you in understanding of His religion and the beautiful application and the manner that is pleasing. The secret behind this lies in the love and the hope and the fear. The love and the hope and the fear. And whenever a person, he truly loves Allah and he remembers Allah and he's performing the worship because he loves Allah for all of his favors and blessings that he has given him. And he at that time remembers the blessings of Allah and he remembers likewise his own shortcomings with regards to the blessings of Allah. And he has strong hope for the reward of Allah. At this time, the action of worship becomes purified. And the hope for the worldly praise and the worldly gain goes away. So whenever a person is hoping, his hope is in his heart high and strong for the reward from Allah. At this time, the hope for the praise of the people goes away. And the hope for the position or status or some benefit in this life goes away. So by having strong hope in Allah Azza wa Jal, the little pieces of bad stuff and the drops of bad stuff, they go away. And now the worship becomes pure. Now the worship becomes pure. You understand this? So this is from the means to have ikhlas, to have strong love for Allah by knowing Him by His beautiful names and attributes. And from the best of that is that which is mentioned in Ayat of Kursi. And by understanding that, and likewise by implementing that at the time of every action of worship, by doing that for the sake of Allah, meaning hoping for the reward from Allah alone and nothing else. Shaitan will come and say to you, oh, your dad is watching. Make your prayer beautiful. You say, oh, the Billah, astaghfirullah, and just keep praying for the sake of Allah. Keep praying for the sake of Allah. You're reciting the Quran, and then somebody starts listening and they're, oh, they're looking at you with a beautiful face. Wow, wow, that recites so good. And the shaitan is going to say, oh, I'll make it better. They're going to praise you and they're going to like you a whole lot if you make it even better and better and better. And you say, oh, be like me, shaitan rajim. And you just keep making it for the sake of Allah. And then if the people say, oh, wow, you recite the Quran so good. Oh, mashallah, you're so young and you memorize so much. That will not hurt you. That will not even bother your worship because you didn't do it for that reason. Rather, your heart was pure. You had ikhlas. You had the Aniyya al khadisa a Safiya and Naqiya, a Safiya and Naqiya. It was for the sake of Allah. And then if somebody praises you or says some good things about you or gives you some good things in the worldly life because of you being nice and being a good Muslim, then that will not harm you, alhamdulillah, because the intention is pure. The intention is pure. It's for the sake of Allah alone. But if somebody had the intention mixed up, even if it's just a little bit, it's not going to be any good. Can you imagine if you had a whole gallon of milk, but it had one drop of blood in it? Will you drink it? Audhu billah. Audhu billah. You had a big gallon of milk. It had one little bitty speck of poo, -poo in it. Will you drink it? Audhu billah. Get that away from me. That's not khadis. I'm only drinking the Lebanon khadis. If, if I'm going to drink some Lebanon, inshallah, it has to be khadis. I'm not drinking the one that's mixed up with that type of stuff. Huh? I'm not mixing drinking the one that, like that. Like that, أنا أغنى شركاء الشرك من عمل عمل أشرك فيه معي غيري تركته وشرك. Anybody does an action and he makes any partners with me whatsoever, even a smallest partner, then I'll leave him and his partner. Meaning Allah Azza wa Jalla, He only accepts the religion that is pure, the intention that is clean, the one who does it sincerely for the sake of Allah, and just to emphasize this affair that this is the action of the heart. And along with that as well, along with that as well, for the deed to truly be accepted, it has to also be in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pure and clean and free from any innovation. From any innovation and any desires and any customs and cultures, rather, purely upon the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, radiallahu anhum. May Allah grant us all success to have sincerity and ikhlas, to reach the month of Ramadan and to fast for the sake of Allah and to establish the obligations for the sake of Allah and to give us 
the grace of having a pure and a beautiful and a good intention to save us from showing off and to save us from hoping for the worldly life and to make us from those who are good and to reach Ramadan in the best manner and fast and stand for his sake alone and we ask Allah to grant us a long life upon his obedience and this is very important the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man sama Ramadan iman and wahtisaba wufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi that whoever fasts the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and yani sincerity for the sake of Allah and believing in him and hoping for the reward from Allah azza wa jalla alone then that which has proceeded from his sins will be forgiven. وَمَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا هُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ And whoever stands in the night prayer, all of Ramadan, with sincere faith and hoping for the reward from Allah alone, meaning with ikhlas, وَالْإِتِبَعَ Then everything that has proceeded from his sins will be forgiven. وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إيمانا واحتسابا غفر الله ما تقدم من ذنبه إنه رستاز on the night of القدر out of sincere faith and hoping for the reward from Allah alone then that which has proceeded from his sins will be forgiven and this is the last class until after Ramadan بإذن الله تعالى and announcements will be made in due time with regards to that which we will start بإذن الله تعالى بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم